Senior goalkeeper Brendan McVeigh will be doing his level best to keep his goal intact. Playing behind a full back line that now has Dan Gordon as its focal point at number three, just his sixth game playing there. The half back line is anchored by Burns, Kevin McKernan, who managed to get forward and score two points against Kildare. It's as you were in midfield with Peter Fitzpatrick again replacing Ambrose Rogers from the outset. The half forward line is also settled with Mark Poland, flanked by Danny Hughes and Benny Coulter. They'll inevitably be joined by Mark. Marty Clark, who'll prompt from a deep position, leaving John Clark and Paul McComiskey inside, although the latter will switch with Coulter from time to time. Let's get the thoughts of Martin Carney. Well, Jared Dunham have given a vote of confidence to the team that beat Kildare the last time out. And to be honest with you, I think it's a team that has thrived in the qualifiers. The defence is now, I think, much better with the return of Daniel McCartan. And the repositioning of Kevin McCartan at centre-half back, I think, has been a big success. Up front, I think Marty Clark, to me, has been the ace in the pack. His stealth, his vision, his leadership have been instrumental, basically, in getting down to this All-Ireland Sunday. Yeah, he's a terrific player, and like down, it's Cork's eighth game in this year's championship, and they're in the fortunate position of having the experienced Alan Quirk between the posts, playing in his third All-Ireland final. The full-back line shows Owen Cadigan from Douglas selected to get his first start in the championship, and wearing number two, with team captain Graham Canty ruled out with a hamstring injury, his place in defence goes to John Miskela. The midfield consists of Alan O'Connor and Aidan Walsh, the sixth time they've been paired together in this year's championship. Kieran Sheehan has been moved out to right half forward, and if he plays there, it was his position at under-21 level last year. But of course, it wouldn't surprise if Donico O'Connor, listed at full forward, made the swap at some stage during today's final. Martin, your thoughts? Well, league champions Cork, I think, in spite of the detractors, are here in Merritt The labels athletic and powerful, I think, are justified, but right through the team, the, uh, they have skill in abundance. Paddy Kassan, I think, is very effective for them in defence. O'Connor and Walsh, I think, will, get a, will gain ascendancy at midfield. But up front, I would expect Pat Kelly. He's been consistently very good all year. I'd expect him to give the leadership. Maybe that has been lacking sometimes this summer. And if the ball goes through quickly, and that is a big imperative, I think the inside forwards can thrive. That's the big prize. Sam Maguire, the most famous trophy in Irish sport. David Coldrick from Meath gets the final underway. And straight away it's Cork who tried to mount their first attack. Down there as far as Donnick O'Connor, releasing it to Alan O'Connor, his namesake, and he's blazed it to the left. And he's missed the opening opportunity. That was a good chance, a little bit more composure required. Well, it's early moments, and again, lovely little layoff, great support running at a good angle, but snatched at the shot. He did much more room actually in front of him had he gone on another bit. Well, they have 13 wides in their semi-final and nine of those in the first half against Dublin. Brendan McVeigh from Onriocht kicking this one to the centre of the field. O'Connor rising up for it again and taking it down magnificently. Held there by Paddy Kassan, winning the free kick as he was being fouled. Straight away into the inside forwards it goes towards Sheehan, broken down to Donnick O'Connor, fed back to Sheehan, goal chance, well saved, and it's put in the back, no it's not, somehow it stays out, great defending by Down, and a missed opportunity, a guilt edge opportunity for Cork to have snatched a goal there, there should be a goal and a point up at this stage, still no score, Miskala driving it back once more, down under ferocious pressure, Pa Kelly now, trying to make something out of Cork's third attack, and he's held and it's got to be a free in. So they've a chance of getting a point. By now, there should be four points up on the goalkeeper. Brendan McVeigh denied Cork. Just watch it again. Yeah, Kieran Sheehan this time, good awareness on his part. No, I think he went for the shot first. Great save by uh, McVeigh. And again, a good follow-up by Daniel McCartan to take the ball off the line, but Cork should have scored a goal. Daniel Goulding eventually raises the Cork chairs with his first point of this match. So Cork go in front, three attacks, finally producing something. Here it was again, this was the save. Now watch the follow-up, somehow taken off that line. Great defending there by Dan McCartan. Certainly was great anticipation by Dan McCartan that time, but that's twice that the downfall backline has been ripped to shreds in the first couple of minutes. The two down cornerbacks, by the way, have switched their positions. Goulding's been picked up by Dan McCartan. So he's playing left corner back. Again, a kick out, one in the middle of the park by Cork and Aidan Walsh. Down, held again by Donnick O'Connor. He's gone 45 metres out from the target. Paul Kerrigan pursued by Kevin McKernan. It's all Cork in the opening minutes. 
Down get the possession back, however, through McKernan's persistence. Now Marty Clark, as anticipated, has gone way out the field there. Wins the free kick. Linking up here with Caleb King. Here's Danny Hughes. He's had a great season so far, Danny Hughes. Kenny sets off. Now Benny Coulter. Mo Shields being uh, the one who is marking Benny Coulter. Back once again to Danny Hughes. Trying to get a scoring opportunity for one of his colleagues. It's Coulter as a go. He's going to drop to the left and he's put the ball wide. Down's first attack of the match. So much will depend on this man, Benny Coulter. Nervous start for James McCartan's team. Yeah, but an interesting attack that time again. They're going to have more joy, I think, by going down the flanks. OK, the end result that time was very poor, but Cork have gone through the middle twice, down with their only attack have gone down the flanks. I think they'll be trying to do that continuously today. First kick out of the match then for Alan Quirk. It'll be interesting to see how Cork do on their own kickouts now. He's gone towards the wings, and it's won there by Peter Fitzpatrick, beating his opposite number, Alan O'Connor, to it. Taken by Mark Poland, rolled up towards John Clark. That will be expected of John Clark today to try and provide a menacing figure in front of the Cork full back line. They need a presence in there. Kerrigan back once again here. Miskala feeding it back towards the Nemo Rangers player. Out quickly for it there was Dan McCartan. Here's Kevin McKernan. Again, it's Mark Poland. Coulter. Shields trying to get tight. Out once again came McComiskey. Back towards Marty Clark. Final shot by Danny Hughes. And Danny Hughes puts this one over the bar. First point of the match for Down. And that will settle down this Down challenge very, very, very much. They needed a score here. And it is Danny Hughes who produces it for them. Yeah, and a lovely bit of patience built up that time. Clark's vision, though, was exemplary. Great catch again by Aidan Walsh. If there were a mark in the game, that was it. Fouled anyway, so he's leaving it here for Paddy Kassan to take the return. Back out towards the Kenturk man once again, the 20-year-old. Now he's got a bit of latitude here. Kieran Sheehan taking it in. Trying to make progress. He does well. Oh, he's gone well ahead and he loses his control and lost his way. And Down got a lot of players back and the ball was handled on the ground in the end by Sheehan. And it's a free out. That should have been another scoring opportunity for Cork. They've spurned at least three so far. Yeah, but that's one of the problems actually about the surface today. It has rained very heavily throughout the minor game and all morning. The surface is still very wet and to hop the ball is a disaster really for players. Sheehan should have kept that ball in hand and go for his point. From McVeigh's free for down. Good running by Danny Hughes. But he's got a lot of work to do from a deep position here. Oh, Declan Rooney slipped. Doesn't come back to a down player. Comes to Pa Kelly instead. Kelly, who engineered the free from which Cork got their only points so far. Back with Mark Poland. Very industrious, very hard-working man on the 40. Well, notionally anyway. From Rooney forward here again as far as Peter Fitzpatrick. And the 22-year-old fouled, leaving the uh, free kick to Mark Poland. Marty Clark comes running, takes his man with him. On that occasion, it was Noel O'Leary who came out. Now Benny Coulter. Clever ball. McComiskey trying to get in on the blind side of the defender is Ray Carey. Now trying to make an angle, going this way and that, onto his right. It's a tricky angle, just a little bit too acute on this occasion. Good young player, Paul McComiskey, scored a goal and three here back in the 2005 minor final, I remember. Didn't get man of the match that day when they beat uh, Mayo. Was Marty Clark got that, but he got his All-Ireland minor medal. Looking for a senior this afternoon with seven minutes gone and the game level at a point apiece. Should be Down's possession. Callum King, again releasing it quickly to Mark Poland. The big men in the middle just win possession, lay it off smartly. It's a simple and effective philosophy. Benny Coulter against Shields. Again, it goes left. And again, a missed opportunity. Third wide for Down. 
filter yeah. solos very confidently here. Big task for Michael Shields. Yeah, big task. I'm surprised Michael Shields marking him in one way, and I'm more surprised actually by Noel O'Leary marking Marty Clark because I think whoever marks Marty Clark needs to be very disciplined, and sometimes that is a particular um, you know moniker you don't associate with Noel O'Leary. Because Clark is a central figure in everything that uh, Down have been doing this year. Only 22 years of age, great football brain, back from Collingwood, who play next weekend, by the way, in the grand final in Australia. That's uh, one by Cork, and it's Shields from the knockdown. Quick look up now. Difficult one there for Delico O'Connor. One instead by Dan Gordon. Back out here as far as Poland again. Slipping it out as far as Connor Garvey. Setting off, showing too much of that. In came Park Kelly. But again, there's an opportunity to run at the Cork defence. Declan Rooney this time. Recycling it back as far as Damien Rafferty, the Newry Shamrocks player. Very experienced man. Fitzpatrick laying it in here, broken down on as far as Paul McComiskey, scoring chance for McComiskey. Lovely economical style. His first point. And down, go in front in the All Ireland final after nine minutes. Yes, that's a beautifully worked score again. McCominsky got on the end of a very good move that time. Leapfrogged over one player, shot a very good score, but the down ability to get the ball down the wings at the moment is causing Cork trouble. And credit John Clark that time for knocking it down for McCominsky. Did well. Now, what can Cork do in the counter attack? They can lay it back to Park Kelly from Donegal O'Connor. Here's John Miskala. Worst kept secret, I think, in. Uh, Gaelic games was that Miskola was going to start this match and that Graham Canty was not because of the injury. That's another wasted opportunity. As per usual, Conor Coonahan there alongside Terry O'Neill on his right as we see it, the manager and selector. Starting the game up in the stands, getting an overview of proceedings. Cork have done better in the second half. I'm sure that's down to uh, what he has observed and been able to implement during the halftime deep talk in particular. McVeigh's kick out reaches Marty Clark quickly laid off. This is beautiful. Hughes jinking, staying balanced, staying in control, but finishing very poorly. Well, he'd be disappointed with that one. That wasn't his best effort. Yeah, that was very simple, actually. A lovely kick out, break well run by uh, Down again. Danny Hughes that time had much more time than he realized he should have finished that off with a score. The wides mounting up for down as Owen Cadigan bursts forward. First start for him in the championship in football. It goes via Sheehan as far as Noel O'Leary. Back here to Paul Kerrigan. Well, it's midway between the corner flag and the goalpost. Not terribly good. Cork haven't scored now for some nine minutes. Reminds me a little bit about uh, with last year's All-Ireland final when Cork were shooting into that goals against Kerry. They started to shoot from distance again, somewhat recklessly. At the moment, they've lost the shape in their full forward line somewhat, and there's not enough movement going on in there. And I think rather than shots like that, they need to work the ball in quicker and maybe the full forwards and lift, uh, getting it out of half forwards coming through in the burst. Brendan McVeigh. Again, the battle for supremacy in the middle of the park, claimed brilliantly by Alan O'Connor. Back to Michael Shields, today's on-field captain. Paul Kerrigan now, who had that miss, taking off past Kevin McKernan. This is good by Kerrigan, and he's won a free in. So a chance for Cork to draw level, their only point, of course, coming from the boot of Daniel Goulding from a free kick. This was good pace, good penetration by Paul Kerrigan, drawing the foul, so once again, Daniel Goulding ready to hit this. He's on seven goals and uh, 77 points so far, which is 98 points in all. And he's put this one over, so it's 99 for his tally. And Cork draw level. 
yeah, both teams have settled very well into the game. I think down in particular for a team that are in the first All Ireland since 1994 are doing very, very well. I know it's new players and all of that, but they're very much at home on the occasion today. They're showing no inhibitions whatsoever. They're full of confidence and playing some very good football. And they have this unbeaten record in finals that's been much spoken about, of course. Five final appearances, five final victories. Clark pushed, pushed by Noel O'Leary. That's that curious matchup, and the referee will bring the ball forward 13 metres because Cork are deemed not to have been that distance from the ball, but I think they're complaining that the free was hit into the back of a Cork player as he was walking away from it. Just have a look at this again. Did they have their backs to it? Yeah, you see Noel O'Leary was walking away from it, and it hit him in the back. Yeah, I just get the feeling actually the referee might have actually been moving it forward before that. Maybe there was some dissent on the part of the, uh, of the Cork team. It's quite possible. Marty Clark then looking for his first point of this match and to put his team back in front again. From about 43 metres out, it's an easy enough kick for him by his high standards. And down lead by three points to two. Well, it's a down team beaten by Tyrone earlier on in the championship in the... Uh, Ulster Championship at that, but they learned an awful lot as a result of that defeat, I think, and they put, they implemented the lessons from that, which is to the credit of the management. Very much so, and I think in particular putting Kevin McKernan in the centre-half back has brought them on, uh, you know, an awful lot since then, and also actually the recall of Daniel McCartan from suspension. He was sent off in the League 2 Division final here against Armagh, but he has tightened things up immensely at the back. Alan Quirk slips as he kicks this one out, and again it is down who are winning the Cork kickouts and cleverly setting up a chance here. John Clark, his fourth time to play in Croke Park this season, and he scored eventually. Didn't score in the Division Two League final or in the other championship matches here, but he's got a point in the all important All Ireland final and down lead by double scores, four points to two. It was very much down to the individual <laughs> skill of John Clark older brother of Marty. Yeah, and I think there was an unfortunate slip on the part of a uh, Cork defender that time, which made it that little bit easier. But Cork are in the middle of the field. They're not getting the possession that I expected them to get. Well, Cork's only scored so far. Two-pointed freeze. Maybe it's that missed goal opportunity in the opening minutes that has unsettled them somewhat, for starters. But now they're very much rattled and riled by the persistence of Down and the way in which Down are harassing them and tackling and pressurising them and forcing them into making errors. Cadigan this time. Well, that typifies the Down attitude today. They're full of spirit, full of verve, and again, going for everything. But Cork will be very disappointed, as I said, that their big players around the middle of the park are not winning kickouts. And I would feel myself that Alan Quirk needs to drive the ball out long rather than placing it to the, to the wings, because I think around the middle they have a, a decided height advantage. Well, this should be absolutely ideal for Marty Clark, kicking with the left boot, curling it in, no real trouble, over the bar, and another for down. And everybody in the full forward line has now scored four points between them. That's good going. As you say, they have settled. Nothing to do with this uh, first time out in an All-Ireland final. It hasn't worried them one little bit. They always say that when down, get to a final, they bring a certain swagger, a certain confidence with them. And that's been demonstrated out there right now. By comparison, Cork full of effort, but there's a degree of hesitation as well. And maybe just uh, looking for a break or two. Aidan Walsh kicked it poorly. Out came Dan Gordon. Very much a stopgap fullback. Preferred to be playing in midfield, I'm sure. Benny Coulter, he'll play anywhere. Left half forward at this stage. Holding it, waiting for Kevin McKernan to come on to. Looking to add to the uh, All-Ireland medal his dad got here back in 91. As that's kicked by Peter Fitzpatrick. And he's missed the opportunity and he's put it wide. Uh, well, he was man of the match in that uh, under-21 final that uh, was played last year. Didn't win the... Uh, all-Ireland medal that day, but he gave a terrific performance. He'll be very disappointed with that, because it, once more, I think it was Daniel Hughes, got loose from his marker. Fitzpatrick coming up on the overlap, got the opportunity, but shot a bad wide down, or really on top around the middle of the park at the moment. Cork looking to try and win this kick out, and they just might get the break this time. It's Aidan Walsh who gets away. Nicely forward here by John Miskala. Miskala. Looking to shoot himself. It's got to drop short. Easy one for Brendan McVeigh to take. 
held on to by Kevin McKernan, slipping it outside to Peter Fitzpatrick, and the midfielder just waits, there's no pressure on him. It's great ball, brilliant ball. Poland gets free, gets inside the marker, gets inside Kassan, now, or sorry, Miskala rather, back once again towards Makamuski, looking to shoot under pressure, and he's put it over the bar, and it's a great start to this match for Down. They weathered the early pressure against Cork. They got lucky with the goal that Cork might have scored. They've come back confidently, and they're all scoring freely. And they're looking very, very confident. Look at this for a pass. It was absolutely brilliant. Perfect delivery. You could see Miskala, who had been up the other end, chasing back after it. Yeah, the foot passing is excellent. Peter Fitzpatrick, that time it was, who executed. But the, the movement, I think, at the moment of the down forward line is just outstanding. It's causing huge problems for the court defence. They're finding it very difficult to track their markers. On top of that, the likes of Pierce O'Neill, who's been spoken to at the moment, hasn't touched the ball yet, hasn't really got into it from the first moment. And the need leaders at the moment, they seem to be diffident, they seem to be lacking in confidence and inhibited. And that surprises me about a team who's been here a number of occasions over the last couple of years. Well, Cork's record in All-Ireland Finals is uh, rather abysmal. This is their 25th time to play in an All-Ireland Final. They've won only six so far of the previous 24 finals. I think if there were a building firm, they'd probably be in Nama at this stage. That's kicked out into the middle, and it's fisted back by Peter Fitzpatrick. Here comes John Miskala, pursued by Mark Poland. Fouled, free kick. The big players, as you say, Martin, have got to get into this game for Cork. F there to put in a sustained challenge. That's prodded forward by Kieran Sheehan, trying to get the better there of his marker is Rafferty. Sheehan still, everybody claiming it, and the linesman on this near side saying that's going to be a line ball to down, playing in the uh, change strip. Yes, that's a good call actually by the linesman, but equally yeah. so it's a second good call because I think Daniel McCartan that time took the ball from inside the boundary line, so it's a throw up 13 metres from the sideline. Let's just have a look at this again here. Yes, it came off Kieran Sheehan, so the first call is right, and subsequent call was correct also by the linesman. Well done. So this throw, 13 metres in from the near sideline, and that time the referee seems to indict Pierce O'Neill. And down have the possession, and they can start again. That's a poor kick away by Brendan McVeigh. Should have been taken by Shields, but he did enough on it anyway to get it to Miskala. Now Goulding. Held on to here by Aidan Walsh, but he's 50 metres out from the target. A little bit of movement ahead here from Paul Kerrigan, but really into the corner. And there's a lot of work to do from here just to try and create a scoring chance. And Cork, as you can see, are four points behind. Here's Paddy Kassan. Great pressure from down. Excellent defensive work. They're working as a unit, working as a team. Brilliant play. Declan Rooney feeding it out here as far as Danny Hughes. Points so far for the 28-year-old from Savile. Slipped back in here to Poland. Everything seems to go through him. Marty Clark playing further forward than I've seen in recent championship matches. He's tended to play very, very deep on occasions, but he's a real threat, a real menace for Cork. Oh, he was looking there for Paul McComiskey, but it was well defended by Ray Carey. That needed his intervention. Goalkeeper trying to set up Paddy Kassan here, trying to urge him to carry it forward. Cork go lateral. And that time Miskala fouled, fouled by McComiskey, and Cork have the opportunity with Ray Carey here, linking up with Alan O'Connor. Waiting for movement, and it's coming back again. Cork static in that inside forward line. Need more people creating more of a menace in there. And Down are comfortably able to handle all of the threats so far presented. Yes, Down are first to every ball at the moment. The likes of, for example, Donald O'Connor hasn't got into the game at all. He seems strangely subdued, not going hard for it. And that's very untypical. Here's Pierce O'Neill. Playing it back here again. This shot has gone to the left and this one has gone wide. And it's a... A wasted opportunity, and certainly the management team must be very, very displeased with what they've seen so far. This was fed back out here as far as Paul Kerrigan. That's the one that went astray there, and that's yet another wide for Cork. That is their fourth so far. Yeah, but you must credit the pressure that the down defence are putting on the Cork attackers. They're not giving them any room. The pressure on the middle of the field is immense. And at the moment, down seems so comfortable by comparison with Cork. 
10 minutes since Cork scored and they've now restructured their forward line and Sheehan has now gone back to right half forward Paul Kerrigan's gone back to top of the left it's as they were programmed in other words so another attack down have had their spell of dominance Cork now look for scores from Pa Kelly's pass O'Connor has lost it that's great defending again good simple and effective defending that time by Rooney just slipping in the right hand dispossessing the forward doing everything right so far Peter Fitzpatrick that's too long that's too ambitious and it's easy for Cadigan to come or should have been manages to get it back as far as Miskala now Aidan Walsh about to be challenged overhits the pass an elementary mistake and down will take the opportunity now once again but McComiskey trying to set up Coulter has moved inside this time won by Shields and Cork have it back again that's Owen Cadigan, hurler come footballer. Kerrigan just trying to steal a march on Demian Rafferty and the referee saw what was going on and saw the push on the Newry Shamrocks player. Free to down. Yeah, dare I say it, Ger, but at the moment I think Cork look like a team that are overtrained. They look very tired, they look very slow going to the ball, they're devoid of energy. Whereas down are full of verb, full of imagination, managing to get their big players into the game just at the moment the leadership is absent from the Cork team that I would have expected to be manifest at this stage and Paul Kerrigan has got himself a yellow card one foul too many I'm afraid from his point of view and David Coldrick from Meath has showed him the card down goes short from the free kick Connor Garvey slipping it ahead to McKernan remember he got those two tremendous points against Kildare in the semi-final that one that pass was just too far ahead of him so line ball to Cork Cork crowd getting a bit edgy only two points for them so far both of them from free kicks there's a down player on the ground that's Conor Garvey and the referee I think uh, not buying what uh, Garvey was obviously intimating that he was being fouled so he told him get up and Garvey did Carey down as far as Pierce O'Neill back once again to the man who took that uh, sideline kick now Kassan, two wing-backs have been pinned back here really, Noel O'Leary and Kassan. Now let's see what the forwards can do with this one as O'Connor tries to break it, Pierce O'Neill slips out the right leg, it comes eventually to Park Kelly, who's been in very good form this year. And they go back to the middle of the park, now look for an opening, Miskala had one shot that dropped short earlier on, and this one has gone away to the left, they are looking like a side really lacking in confidence. Lacking in confidence, rudderless, being rushed into errors all the time. Down by contrast, are way sharper than uh, than Cork. It, this surprises me hugely because I thought in the, in the okay maybe they stuttered into the final. You could say Cork did, but I'd expected today that they would have got rid of a lot of the errors that they had been there beforehand and come up with a big performance today. So far, it's missing. Scoring chances so far. You can see Down creating three more than Cork. And they've got a free kick from their own 65 metre line. Slipping it out here to Danny Hughes. Now, what can he do? Two Cork men out there to challenge, to try and take it from him. A Cork team beaten in the All Ireland final by Kerry in 2007, beaten again in 2009. That's a lovely pass back to Hughes. Scoring chance here, might even be a goal chance. Oh, it's up and it's over the bar. Danny Hughes. Well, he seemed to be summing up his options there as he was coming forward into the angle and the down fans happy enough that he took the point eventually. Fisted it over just for a moment, I think. They probably thought it was going to drop short and into the net and it wouldn't have counted. It was so simple, though. A lovely bit of slick movement by a nippy player who's been outstanding all year, thinking quicker than Cork are at the moment down are. Got the opportunity and took it. Probably took the percentages. He had Clark open for a goal possibility, but did the right thing and put it over. Well, the physios are out attending to uh, Potty Kassan here, who's been one of the most consistent players in the championship this season for Cork, attended there by Colin Lane and Michael O'Leary, the assistant physio. 
Well, they're still sitting there in the uh, stand. I often wonder, I know you've expressed your view that it's a good idea to sit up in the stand and take an overview, but they are now 27 minutes into the game. I, I like to see managers down on the side of the field, I have to say, urging, cajoling, maybe criticising. There's a presence there, at least. Well, there's a presence, but I would still agree with what Conor Cunningham is doing by you know, getting this overview of the game from a more elevated position. But you know, just going back to the down situation at the moment, OK, maybe they're buoyed up by their legacy of never been beaten in an Ireland final, but there's no doubt about it, they're way less fearful today than Cork are. Cork are hamstrung at the moment with fear right throughout their team. Alan Quirk kicking it, and there was some uh, pushing this time by a down defender, and it's uh, Caleb King. So the free kick taken, King bends his back, couldn't take it the first time, needs a little support, Oop, they fumbled it there, but they were lucky enough to get it back, and Benny Coulter feeds it in, Marty Clark pushed from behind by Noel O'Leary, and Noel O'Leary is ha certainly having his hands full in this matchup with Marty Clark, as you said earlier, Martin, it wasn't the matchup we were anticipating. Here's John Clark, five years older than his brother, back towards McComiskey. John Clark, having scored earlier on, having felt confident, lets it in. Alan Quirk does well, gets his fist to it, it goes behind, and it's the game's first 45. Well, he had to come out that time, and you can see by the body language there, Alan Quirk isn't one bit pleased with himself. The 33-year-old came out here, was left isolated, had to concede the 45, but there's not a great deal happening in front of him. No, there's not a great deal happening, but I think what's happening with Benny Coulter at the moment is that he may have jarred his knee during that particular event, and I'd say he'd be requiring treatment. I just hope from a down point of view it isn't serious. Yeah, he'd be a huge loss, just as Graham Canty is a huge loss for Cork. They were hoping that they might be able to get some minutes out of Graham Canty. They're going to need him, just as Down certainly need Benny Coulter. Yeah. Back on his feet anyway. Marty Clark to take the resultant 45. He scored two points from freeze already. Drills this one, but hits it to the right, and he's put it wide. Well, he's the uh, man who scored a goal and 17 when he was a schoolboy, only in fifth class in his school in a college's match. An amazing tally over 60 minutes. Paddy Kassan pinned back. Alan Quirk now. Disappointing final so far for uh, neutrals and certainly for the Cork fans who've travelled here in big numbers. But everything going right for down. Can they keep it going? Kerrigan is fouled by Damien Rafferty. Free into Cork. Cork's last score was in the 12th minute. So we've gone a good 17, 18 minutes. And two frees. Their only return so far. A rather miserable return from a first half where they haven't really played as they are able to. But credit down, they didn't leave them. Donnick O'Connor is going to take this. Well, he needs a score just to try and get his confidence going. Cork need a score as well, just to give them a boost. And this curls, but it yes, it curls just inside. Just about made it. A point for Cork then, cutting into the deficit, and it's seven points to three. Yes. All of Cork scores from freeze. Yeah, and beautifully struck. Just come in, came in at the last minute, and that'll do Donnick O'Connor a lot of good because he's been very quiet up to now and hasn't been able to break loose from the clutches of Dan Gordon, who's play, playing him very cleverly. But five minutes to go to the break. So far, so good for Down. But again, from their own kick out, it's Cork who are winning those. It's rather a strange situation, because Down have been doing well on the Cork kickouts. Miskala laying it in towards O'Connor, released to Pierce O'Neill. Again, look at the number of Down players who close in and back out towards Goulding. Setting his foot through this and putting it over the bar. His third point is 100th in the championship. More importantly today, however, Cork's first point from play comes in the 32nd minute, would you believe? And it's put three between them. And even though Cork haven't played at all in this first half as they are usually able to, they're back in the game with two in a row. Very true, Ger. That's the amazing thing about it. Down have been completely in the ascendancy, but yet in the scoreboard, there's only a miserable three points between them. And Miskola now is beginning to win a lot of ball there around the half back line. Distribution here just uh, a little poor, however. Over ambitious hit to Paul Kerrigan. Kerrigan, the only player with a, a yellow card against his name. 
in the match. Line ball kicked in as far as Marty Clark. Again, O'Leary chases after him. But really, he's just uh, chasing and trying to limit his effectiveness. Not really winning an awful lot of ball against Marty Clark. Rooney back as far as Rafferty. Slipped back into Poland. They hold, nothing silly. And then they wait for a decent run forward. And there are players up there like Danny Hughes who can get on the ball and get out ahead of the defender. Look smart. Release it back towards Kevin McKernan. Big ambitious one in. Benny's ready to jump for it. He's got it as well. And down he goes and it's going to be a free in. Magnificent play by Benny Coulter, the 28-year-old from Mayo Bridge. Well, he's tormented so many backlines in the past. Good to see him here in an All-Ireland final, getting his chance. He's one of those players, I feel, had he been around in the uh, 90s, he'd have an All-Ireland medal to his name at this stage. That was a majestic piece of feeling that time. It reminded me of, of a photograph I saw in yesterday's paper with uh, was it Shawnee Walsh and Brian Mullins going up for a ball. That was wonderful to witness. Yeah. Great catch, and the reward now is, a, is an opportunity for Marty Clark. And Marty Clark puts it over. Three points, all of them coming from freeze after the mercurial. Benny Coulter won it in the air and was fouled, and it's eight points to four. 34 minutes into the All-Ireland final, the 121st. Alan Quirk just looking around, summing up to see where can he kick this one and where can Cork try and retain the possession. Cork's winning kickouts has come in the main from the down kickouts. This time they win their own. Pierce O'Neill, Poddy Kassan, Aidan Walsh. Well, Cork in the second half of their matches have brought on their big subs. They brought on the Nicholas Murphys and the Colum O'Neills and Derek Cavanagh to try and turn the game, and that may well be in the mind of the managers, I would imagine, as we head towards half-time. Meanwhile, Donico O'Connor, who scored from a free, has scored now from play. He wheeled around brilliantly that time and makes it eight points to five, and Cyril Cavanagh there, the Mexican fan, is delighted with that one. Not so pleased, James McCartan, who saw his man there, his fullback Dan Gordon, allowed Donico O'Connor get too much room and Donnick O'Connor is now pumped up and full of confidence. Well, that passivity you saw earlier from O'Connor now has been replaced with a lovely piece of dynamism that time. That was a wonderful score by Donnick O'Connor. The game may be turning around. It was all down for a long, long time. And the question I was asking Conor Cunahan last week in the interview was, you know, the mental baggage of having lost two finals, is it there? One minute of added time as Cadigan goes back came on as a substitute last year in the football final. Miskell has swung around, free kick to Cork, down leading as we are into additional time. Here's Kieran Sheehan setting off. Youngest player in today's final, down towards Paul Kerrigan, trying to take on Damien Rafferty, succeeding, coming in from the angle, ball running away from him, and that's gone for a 45. Probably about as much as he could have done because he had got into such an acute angle there. I don't think it's sufficient latitude to try and pull it back for Donico O'Connor. That was probably in his mind. Knew he couldn't beat the goalkeeper from such a tight angle. But here he is from the reverse angle here. And the keeper did well, put out his right hand and decided, let's uh, see what happens from the 45. He certainly did do very well because that was a wonderful piece of play by, uh, by, I think, both players, actually, by Paul Kerrigan in trying to get in along the end line. But disciplined tackling by Damien Rafferty. But credit also Brendan McVeigh for his positioning that time because, quite honestly, I thought the ball was going wide, but it hit off him and out for a 45. Well, a down player, as you can see, requiring the attention this time of the uh, physio, Noel Rice. And it's uh, Kevin McKernan from Burren being attended to by Rice and uh, Noel Rice the physio his wife Adele and new baby Joseph watching this I understand goalkeeper did really well that oh, time because yeah. that could have been a very dangerous situation had he just decided to palm it down because Donnick O'Connor would probably have pounced this might be the last kick of the first half Daniel Goulding he drops it and it's dropped into the hands of a down defender, Dan Gordon, as the referee calls for the ball, blows for half-time. 
Well, Cork started well and had opportunities, didn't take them, but down came back strongly and played all or nearly all of the good football in the first half. The down fans will be happy. Paul Kerrigan trotting off at half time here, didn't score. Cork came back with a couple of scores, but it took them a long, long time to get their first from play. Down will be the happier, but there are only three points between the teams as they come in, and the down management team there with uh, McCartan and his selectors considering what they'll do, because at half time it's down eight points. Cork, five points. Michael, in the middle of the field for Cork right now, it's Nicholas Murphy and Aidan Walsh. I think it should be pointed out that Nicholas Murphy has a back injury and in all probability he would not be able to go a full 70 minutes. I think that's the feeling within the camp and probably Nicholas's feelings as well. So he's in for the second half, 35 minutes to go to resolve the 2010 All-Ireland Football Final. It's advantage down by three points and they have the possession immediately here. It's lost by Mark Poland, however. And there's an opportunity for uh, Paul Kerrigan starting at right half forward to kick it in long inside towards Donegal O'Connor, and it's gone astray and it's gone wide and the first attack of the second half comes to naught. And there's an injury immediately in the uh, middle of the park to one of the down players as we watch this again here. It's Peter Fitzpatrick, by the way, who's gone down with the injury. That's what happened to him. Yeah, he was winded that time with a late tackle from Nicholas Murphy, but I'd say he'll be up in a couple of moments and ready to go again. Fitzpatrick has played very well when you consider that he's come in from an, for an iconic figure like Ambrose Rogers, and his feeling has been good, and uh, just generally speaking, a very good young footballer. Isn't it amazing, Martin, when you look at this final, two qualifiers in the final, first time ever, first final I can recall, where the two captains aren't able to start. And the manager is down here now on the side, as you can see, Conor Cunahan. It's a very good idea, I think, to be up there and get an overview earlier on, but uh, I think he'll do his best work now down there. He needs to drive them on. He's a great manager, Conor, and he's trying to make incremental progress with this team. Semi-finalist in his first year, 08. Finalist in 09. And you know what he's trying to achieve this afternoon. Down of other ideas as Fitzpatrick is back on his feet again. Paddy Talley there went in to have a word, along with the physio. So this kick out by Brendan McVeigh, 31 year old from Unreacht, lands in the hands of Benny Coulter. Showing a bit of vision now, trying to pick out Marty Clark. They combine so well and so productively. Lobbing it in here, dangerous moment. Back from Akamaski's shot off the post, it comes. Back down to Ray Carey. Great opportunity there for Down to get the first point of the second half. But instead, it's with Cork's Aidan Walsh down towards Pierce O'Neill. Needs to get into the match. Game seemed to have passed him by in the opening 35 minutes. Kerrigan now again. Holding, waiting. Cross here towards Paddy Kassan. Down towards Donico O'Connor again. Couldn't hold it, couldn't take it. Another ball has gone aimlessly wide. So two completely unproductive Cork attacks. Meanwhile, down themselves had a most interesting forward thrust at the other end, and Paul McComiskey very nearly got his third point of the match when that ball was fed out to him by John Clark. He was misfortunate because it came down off the upright. Yes, and again, everything came from the laser-like accuracy of Marty Clark, a wonderful crossfield ball. Well, it took Cork until 32 minutes to get their first point from play. They're still only three points behind. They were the favourites in the eyes of many going in here, certainly the bookmakers. That's aimless by Paul Kerrigan. He's pointing out to some of the others that should have been making movement. Instead, it's down who are making the moves. Danny Hughes lobbed down there once again towards the impish Paul McComiskey. And that time, it's a lovely, smooth delivery as McComiskey goes through the football and over the bar. Opening point of the second half for him and for Down. Nine points to five, they lead here. But the end product of a beautiful pass down to Paul McComiskey. Brilliant work by the 22-year-old from Dundrum. Well, that sums up the way Down are playing. Their forward play is outstanding. They're playing with great cohesion. And the off-the-ball movement by McComiskey and Hughes, two small men in stature, but massive hearts, wonderful instincts. And again, the combination between the two of them that time was top class. And a third score, I think it is, for McComiskey. John Miskell is OK. 
down ahead by four. Early stage of the second half. Great catch in the middle of the park, this time by Nicholas Murphy, the Carragher line man, playing in his fifth All-Ireland final, doesn't want to lose another. Up towards Donnick O'Connor. On his right side this time. Oh, that's crafty ball in there. Sheehan's in there as well. And he goes down and he was fouled by the goalkeeper. It's going to be a free in from the 13-metre line. Good work by Kieran Sheehan. Came out here, went after it. Goalkeeper decided he wasn't going to get it and took down the number 10. Well, dare I say it, is Kieran Sheehan not better suited to the full forward position or a position close to goals rather than playing out a wing forward? He has the bulk, he has the, the necessary ability to win ball, much greater than Donnick O'Connor. And as a result of that, they go point for point. Daniel Goulding with his fourth point of this match, first of the second half. Well, three of his scores have come from freeze and the one from play of course just before half time so as you were at the break three between them and Cork are preparing Graham Canty is taking off the track suit he'll be in presently as Aidan Walsh rises for this one he's fouled they need Canty they need their captain back out it comes again towards Pierce O'Neill free to Cork taken quickly out to Kassan, looking up at the target, trying to go through, trying to knife his way in. Held on to by Kieran Sheehan, awkward angle, recycling it back towards the left half back again. I'm not quite sure what that was meant to be. Might have been a pass, but it ended up being neither a shot nor a pass by Potty Kassan. And it's time for Graham Canty to be introduced by his team manager, Connor Cunahan. Canty coming in for his 49th championship match. And the player who's coming off is uh, going to be Paddy Kassan. Well, this is a real gamble by Cork. Again, if Canty has a problem with his hamstring, he'll find out very soon if it's fit enough for this kind of an encounter or not. I thought originally he might play in the full back line and pick up John Clark, but he's gone out into the middle of the field. This is taken well here by Owen Cadigan. Three points the margin in the All-Ireland final. Canty taking it, fouled, free kick rapidly taken by Pa Kelly. Hit in there towards Kieran Sheehan and Daniel Goulding goes chasing after it as well. Back out towards Nicholas Murphy. Another of the second half substitutes on for Paul Kerrigan. Trying to stand his ground, he's down. Fouled in the uh, mind of the referee. Peter Fitzpatrick is arguing the point, but it was Kevin McKernan who caught him. And it's going to be a free in. I think it was a very soft free, actually, because I think that Paul Kerrigan slipped in the process of going past his man that time. So this is an easy, no well, not an easy opportunity, but it's a free in that I think was as a result of a uh, soft free. Referee having words with Peter Fitzpatrick. I don't think the incident involved merited a card unless something was said immediately after that and the referee decides to take decisive action. And that's the nature of the action, a yellow card, so it's one per team. Paul Kerrigan got one in the first half. So Cork have a free kick. This is 30 metres out from the target. And not a great deal of wind around right now. It's quite still. Cloudy overhead, but dry anyway. Daniel Goulding to take it. Four points already in the All-Ireland final. This to narrow the gap to two points. Can he make it? He can. His fifth. Nine points to seven. Trying to rally his troops now. Peter Fitzpatrick here. Caught. Well, he didn't. It was uh, Kevin McKernan who did the catching originally. That's where I thought the foul was. It was Peter Fitzpatrick who came in afterwards. Maybe he mouthed something to the referee. Well, it was a very harsh booking as far as I can see. I don't think Fitzpatrick deserved to be booked in that case, nor do I think Kerrigan deserved a free in the first place because I believe he slipped initially. Now it's Dan Gordon's turn to be spoken to. Very important that Down retain their composure here now. They're seeing their lead whittled away, but there's a long, long game still to be played. 27 minutes or so, and there's a yellow card for Dan Gordon. They've got to stay composed. 
They've still got the lead. They've played good football so far. Yes, and have shown a better awareness of what's required so far as well. And again, discipline has been critical uh, up to now, so it's up to them just to keep a cool head. This one is uh, fisted down and taken by Nicholas Murphy. Well, he is ready for the battle. Doesn't want to lose another All-Ireland, but he held on to that one too long. And down have got themselves a free kick, which is going to be taken by Mark Poland. Looking for Marty Clark. Gets there ahead of Noel O'Leary. O'Leary unable to get a challenge, unable to get near him. Strange marking, that one. Runs into Canty. Drops to Mark Poland. Slips away there from... Nicholas Murphy, Poland, jinking back, cutting inside, having a go, it's got direction, it's got accuracy, it's a great score. Mark Poland's first point in the All-Ireland final, blows it out to a three-point advantage for Town once again. Their fans are very, very happy with themselves. 45 minutes are gone, and it's 10-7. Well, that's a lovely piece of individual skill by Mark Poland that time, a small little darty player, guy with great imagination, but the flair and the skill that time, they got him past players, and awareness just putting the ball over the bar, that's a great score, probably the score of the game. John Clark comes off, Conor McGinn goes on, coming on for his 10th championship match. Pressure back on the Cork backs, in the unfamiliar white. Alan Quirk required. Pressurised by Benny Coulter. Kicks it out cagily, out as far as Owen Cadigan. Young man from Douglas, brushes aside McGinn's challenge initially. Shoulder then by Poland. Canty, half blocked. Should be, Dan McCartens, doesn't get to it. Goulding got there first. Held onto by Sheehan, back towards Pierce O'Neill. Loses possession, it's away with Peter Fitzpatrick once again for Down. And Down tried to lay siege on the Cork goal. Out came Michael Shields, fisting it forward, on as far as Kieran Sheehan. It's a different match, it's much more intense all of a sudden. In as far as Donegal O'Connor, kicking, he's scored two, he's now scored three. It's 10-8. Great point. Great point, but notice the ball was delivered quickly that time. A lovely link up with Sheehan and O'Connor. And O'Connor that time showed for the ball with purpose and kicked with conviction. That's more like it from a core point of view. Forget about the lateral play, forget about the short passing, get the ball in quickly. Into the 12th minute of the second half. Second half scores so far. Three points to two in favour of Cork. But still, a two-point game in the overall context. Pa Kelly. Young teacher, 66 possession for Cork in the second half. And we've only played 12 minutes of that half. Graham Canty, his presence there is already having a major beneficial effect. Ray Carey, here as far as Kieran Sheehan, jinking away past Damien Rafferty, cautiously playing it in towards Goulding. Two young players, same club, Era Oog in ovens. Awkward angle, what a score! Daniel Gooley's got his sixth point. It's a one-point game. It's down ten. Cork nine. Yeah, again, quick ball. Lovely showing that time by Golding. Under a lot of pressure from a difficult angle. Shoots a great point. But you can see the confidence starting the course into the Cork team. The crowd are getting behind them. They have started to wake up over 40 minutes into the game. It might sound like a silly question, Martin, but why didn't they try to do this in the first half? Well, I think they were completely chained with nerves. They seemed to be full of uh, basically too many pookies. What a great ta take that time by Aidan Walsh. He's lost it to McGinn. Big question now being asked of Down. So confident themselves in the opening 35 minutes. They need Danny Hughes to reinforce the message, I think, that they're in this game with a big, big chance of taking the Sam Maguire Cup. Marty Clark kicks it away, but only as far as Graham Canty, who goes to ground. Back up on his feet immediately, Nola Leary fisting it forward to Pierce O'Neill. McGinn goes after him, can't catch him. Cleverly in as far as Donnick O'Connor. O'Neill's available, but he slips it back inside towards Kerrigan. Came off a down defender off Connor Garvey, and the umpire was ready to give a 45, but the referee, David Coldrick from Meath, immediately behind it, said no, it went off the Corkman, and he has uh, decided incorrectly that that, in fact, is going to be 
a kick out and not a 45. Good decision by the referee. Great refereeing, good overruling of his umpire. Up with the game, able to see exactly what happened. Definitely came off Paul Kerrigan's leg. Well, it's tense. A point in it. McVeigh's kick. Gathered in brilliantly by Peter Fitzpatrick. Down again, win their own kick out. Towards Marty Clark, and he's fouled this time by Noel O'Leary. Free kick, down fouls. Happy to see it go their way. Cork booing. McComiskey trying to slip inside. Back out towards Benny Coulter. Three Cork backs there, but he still gets in. Benny Coulter. Now he's running into a whole phalanx of Cork backs and Cork hold possession. Reaches Owen Cadigan. Oh, Canty slipped on the greasy surface. Out came Miskala. Noel O'Leary takes and about to be challenged by Marty Clark. But unfairly, you can't challenge from behind like that. And the referee awards the free kick to Cork. And in fact, brings the ball forward 13 metres. Some battle now, 50 minutes gone, 20 minutes more to enjoy, and it's very much there for the winning. Kieran Sheehan, that's a lovely looking kick, and it's gone sailing over the bar. And the teams are level for the third time. Kieran Sheehan, this prodigious talent, 19 years of age, brilliantly done. Well, the efficiency, the accuracy and the movement that were absent in the first half is back with Cork. This is, it's there now with Cork. They're very good in front of goal. Just watch this time, Coulter going through. Just simply over, uh, crowded out by the good Cork defending. Coulter so far hasn't gone into the game that, to the extent that I would like to see from a down point of view. But Martin, that's what down we're doing to Cork in the first 35 minutes. Now it seems to be Cork's turn. But there's a lot of football to be played. Canty. Back as far as Noel O'Leary. An exhilarating All-Ireland final. Quite absorbing. Both teams playing their part right now. The referee awarding the free kick to Down. Yeah, Ray Carey wanted all day to get rid of the ball that time. He had the opportunity to let it go to his forwards. But great defending once again. A great harassing and pressurising by, uh, by the Down forwards. We had a great second half of the minor match as well. Tyrone did well initially were reeled in by Cork, but Tyrone prevailed by a point. Nothing in it here in the senior final. Callum King finding Poland. Kerrigan back to challenge, getting in his hand. Poland holds. That's great vision. That's brilliant play. Out as far as Kevin McKernan to try and slip it over the bar. His first of the day, but he's the centre-half back. And he's put down back in front once again by 11 points to 10. But it was the remarkable pass by Poland to pick him out there. And McKernan with a flawless finish. Brilliant football. Yeah, just watch the Cork tackling. It's clinical, it's relentless. But Poland still has the composure to find McKernan. And that's a wonderful uh, score for Don. At the other end, Pa Kelly. Linking up there with a colleague, with Ray Carey. Up to Donnick O'Connor. Trying to find a colleague. Now down have found renewed heart and renewed energy. And they've got possession again. And Dan McCartan lets it off. Gordon back to McCartan. McGinn. Again, it's the substitute Connor McGinn. Looking for the run here of Paul McComiskey. And he didn't take it as he wanted to. He got an unkind bounce. And it's a line ball to Cork, which is going to be taken by Owen Cadigan into Nicholas Murphy. Well, part of the team beaten in 93 by Derry, by me the 99. The Kerry defeats then. Nicholas Murphy doesn't want another. At the other end, Kieran Sheehan loses the possession. And back is McKernan, but in some difficulty, needs his goalkeeper, McVeigh. Saying to McKernan, you take it. Oh, down a Reggie back there but just so showing sufficient composure to get it out to Declan Rooney and the 26-year-old from Burren slotting it down there towards Marty Clark. Three players around him and the referee says free kick. It's going down's way. Clark to take it. They're in a hurry. Midway through the second half. Callum King. Nice turn by Danny Hughes. 
Hughes holding, waiting, 45 metres out. Graham Canty trying to get in a challenge, and he did enough to put Hughes off. And Cork can counter-attack. They're going to make a change in a minute as Pa Kelly carries it on. Way up there towards Donegal O'Connor. Has possession, gets away from Dan Gordon. He's fouled, and it's a free in. And Cork are considering bringing in Colm O'Neill in the next couple of moments. That was a beautifully flight of uh, pass that time into O'Connor, showing out well this half and, and, and more often than he was in the first half, and draws the foul of Dan Gordon. That's an easy, up, an easy enough opportunity now for Cork to uh, come level. Well, Donnick O'Connor, scorer of 1 5 against Dublin in the semi final, and those scores highly instrumental in securing Cork's victory that day. From a very central position on a calm afternoon, amid great excitement, he puts it over the bar. His fourth, two from play, two from freeze, and they level again. 11 points apiece. So on comes Colm O'Neill, goal scorer in the 2009 final, going off number 11, Pierce O'Neill. And Down are also making a change. And coming on for them will be Ronan Murta and going off Paul McComiskey. Yeah, that surprised me. Paul very surprising. Very surprising. I thought he's been very lively, very effective. Three points to his name, I think, but very effective any time he got the ball. Kerrigan has it. Coming cut inside here. Dangerous. Great score. Paul Kerrigan's first. Well, he was determined. He persisted showed drive and verve and went right through the heart of the down defence here then showed the composure onto the left and he slotted it over to edge Cork into the lead once again 57 minutes are gone great we score from Kerrigan indeed and again Cork have faced up to their limitations in this half thrown away the shackles and are playing much better interesting that they've brought on those three substitutes as well to try and turn the game Peter Fitzpatrick Trying to turn it down's way. They've gone into arrears. Oh, an awkward slip there for Ronan Murta. It's out as far as Aidan Walsh, the midfielder. Covers an awful lot of ground. First season still in the championship. Miskala. Now, Graham Canty. It's a probing ball up towards O'Neill. He does well against Damien Rafferty onto the right. It hits the post, comes back down. Dan Gordon is shouldered out over the end line. That's got to be a 45, and not much doubt about this one. Yeah, there's no doubt about that one. The two lads, maybe like two salmon getting tangled up in the net there at the moment. What a lovely pass again that time. I think it was from Gary Canty. Well, Down are getting concerned about the uh, back line because they're about to bring in Brendan McArdle who started the championship as a fullback, played in the league at fullback, and he's going to come on in place of Damien Rafferty. So their third substitution, both sides with th two possible subs still to bring on as Daniel Goulding kicks it over. Well, he was using an iPod in the build-up to the down game to try and replicate the noise that he was getting or going to get in Croke Park to settle himself down, taking the freeze in practice. It worked, and it's working again today. Yeah, that contrasts completely to the 45 he took on the stroke of half-time that fell short, indicated a lack of conviction. That one went truly all the way. Cork by two. Here's Paul Kerrigan again, taking off past... Kevin McKernan, well blocked by McKernan, but that's going to be another 45 going off the down centre half back. And this game seems to be turning in Cork's direction, but there's still a fair bit of time to play, over 12 minutes still to go. He's down on the sideline now, hoping to win an All Ireland as manager, just as he did as a player back in 89 against Mayo and in 90 against Meath. Daniel Goulding is five from five from freeze so far. He got that last 45, his seventh score of the match. So this, to try and give Cork a little bit more of a lead. 
It's dropping in and it's dropping over. Two in a row from 45 for Daniel Goulding and it's Cork 14, down 11. Let's go to the sideline, Marty Morrissey. Oh, that's interesting. Well, we'd have been querying the other one with uh, Paul McComelsky being taken off in place of Ronan Murty, even though Murty's a very, very good player, and there were a lot of people in down who thought he should have started. Here's Poland again. That's taken beautifully by Danny Hughes. They need more from him. Miskala in there to try and close the gap. Three between them. Conor McGinn laying it back to Peter Fitzpatrick. Well, he's ambitiously going for it. Brilliant if it makes it, but horrible if he puts it wide and he's missed the opportunity. And there were players inside who were looking at him and saying, why didn't you give us a chance? Play the ball into us decently. Well, I think it's a very good point because you have to get the ball to the players who can finish in situations like that. It's very much a Hail Mary shot from an impossible position. That might work once in ten, but they need to play the percentages at the moment, work it look, in and try and get their scores. Just look how Cork have won all these kickouts. They've won another one here by going short. Michael Shields. Well, Cork in the position now where they are leading by three points. As you can see, ten minutes to go. 20 years since Cork won an All-Ireland. 16 since Down were the champions. Who's going to win it? It's advantage Cork. Paul Kerrigan. It's dropping to the right this time. Goulding doing his best. Won back by Dan McCartan, brother of uh, the manager, of course, James. Fitzpatrick, back again it comes. Knocked out of defence down towards Benny Coulter. Hasn't scored in the All-Ireland final. But he's prompted inside towards Clark, whose three points have come from freeze. Waiting and holding. Connor McGinn. Oh, he slipped at the most inopportune moment. Very misfortunate as Canty goes down. And that's going to be a free out to Cork. Well, I think Canty's introduction has had the effect of settling Cork, of giving them added confidence of just making them do, helping them do the right direction. He may not be in the game that much. He's given some good passes, but I think his presence on the field has been immense and it came at the right time. You have to say, Martin, full credit to the management team there of Conor Cunha and Gerald Sullivan, Terry O'Neill, Jim Nolan and Pader Healy, because had they started with him and he got off injured after 15 to 20 minutes, it would have been a, a downer for the rest of the players, I think. Michal Omarohertig here, my colleague. I wish him the very, very best. He's been a wonderful colleague over the years that I've known him, one of my best friends in the broadcasting game. His last All-Ireland final today, barring a replay. Free to Cork. Down's last score was uh, in the 10th minute of the... or 10 minutes ago, rather. They need a score. They're not out of it just yet. Graham Canty. And Cork's fans, I think, urging them now not to start playing around with it back there. Noel O'Leary. Here's Ray Carey. Oh, it's cut out well by Benny Coulter. And Coulter gets away. Now, can he give the leadership yet? to preserve Down's wonderful record of never losing an All-Ireland final. They have a chance here. Peter Fitzpatrick can kick a point, and he's done so. In spite of the attempted block there of Michael Shields, Fitzpatrick's first point coming in the 64th minute. There's still time. It's just a two-point game. Cork 14, down 12. I think it's appropriate punishment for the messing Cork we're doing there at the moment. They give the way of the ball to Benny Coulter. He rolled two tackles in outstanding manner. Fitzpatrick, again for a young lad, showed great leadership in coming forward that time, shot a fine point. Now, Benny's getting uh, booked here. And I'm not sure. Have you any idea? No, I didn't see it. In fact, I thought it was maybe some of the Cork players that might have been booked that time for over-robust tackles on him. Or for taking too much out of the ball. Could we introduce that rule? 
There's, there's, a, a, there's enough of them in there. <laughs> it's going to be a kick out for Cork at the result of all of that. Downs Aidan Brannigan's coming on now for Callum King. Well, as I said, that indecisive play that Cork went on with a couple of moments ago could be fatal. There's still a long time left. There's probably, with added time on, there's about seven or eight minutes left. And for Cork to start playing down or trying to hope that they'll kind of, you know, play the game down and hold on to their lead, it could be fatal. This game is far from won and lost. Pa Kelly can't get to it. It's fisted back again here. And the industrious Ray Carey back. Missed Austria's final because of an injury. Owen Cadigan, hounded there by Danny Hughes, fouled, free to Cork. Use of possession now, absolutely vital. No more Hail Mary kicks, and that really is a wasted use of that vital possession. And down have it back again now, and it's Dan McCartan, the 27-year-old dentist, getting it out here. Not a good ball to Declan Rooney, because he's given Cork a chance to win it back. And then there was a trip, and it's going to be a down free kick. Indecision, indiscipline on occasions, nervousness as well. The two teams are so close to that prize of taking home Sam Maguire. Another change being made. Ronan Sexton's coming on now. I think I saw Ronan Sexton going on there. Certainly Connor Laverty's gone on. Maybe it's Connor Laverty has gone on. It is. And going off, Mark Poland. Well, he had had a very, very good match, I thought. Yeah, and I think Nicholas Murphy has gone off also, and Derek Cadden has come in. So they're doing everything they can, the managers, to try and win this game for their team. As Pa Kelly from Ballancolly kicks it up there towards Donegal O'Connor, racing after it. Well, he's going for the point. If he makes it, it's a, an amazing point. It's a wonderful point. Well, he took on the responsibility. Such a contrast between the Donegal O'Connor in the early stages of this match, when he was indecisive, looked unsure of himself. He wouldn't have attempted anything like this. Have a look at this again. Very near to the end line, onto the right boot, a player approaching him to try and block it, and he got it right between those two tall posts. 15-12, down, come back. Again, it's Fitzpatrick, neatly outside here. Here comes Ronan Murta, and the substitute slots it over the bar. His first point, so we're back to a two-point game again. And three and a half minutes of the 70 still to be played, and I'm sure there'll be the usual two minutes of additional time. So I think we're looking at about another five or six minutes. Great play once again by Peter Fitzpatrick, driving forward on the blind side, getting away from his marker taking the responsibility this time of letting it off to somebody else and, Mor and Rona Morte fires a good score. Quirk's kick right down through the centre. Challenged there by Declan Rooney, but it comes back to a Cork man, to Aidan Walsh, who slips it in here. And there's still an opportunity. O'Connor, oh, well blocked. And it somehow has scrambled out. We had Colm O'Neill with the opportunity. It's gone for a 45. But that was an opportunity for Colm O'Neill to have put it in past the goalkeeper as it was fed over by Kieran Sheehan. Next it was Donegal O'Connor, and then the goalkeeper gets down and blocks well from Colm O'Neill and eventually scrambled out somehow. It should have been a penalty, I think. He yep. touched the ball in this small rectangle and that should Let's have been a penalty. It again. You're right. Y yep. Absolutely. That should have been. The defender going down on it there, but no penalty given. 45 instead. Daniel Goulding's going to take it. He's converted two of his 45s in the second half. This to try and push it out to a three-point advantage again. And again, the connection is perfect. Wonderful technique. And that's his ninth point of this All-Ireland final. Cork ahead by 16 points to 13. We're into the 69th minute. There's a down player on the ground, Connor Garvey. Picks himself up now as the ball is kicked out. Dan Gordon's gone into the middle of the field, but it's Aidan Walsh who collects. Plays it forward towards Derek Kavanagh. Gordon back. 
I think we said two minutes of added time, or is it uh, three minutes of added time? Two, correction. Marty Clark. Big one in. Nicely taken. Coulter. Lovely point. Oh, it's a nervous, edgy finish here in a brilliant match. 16 points to 14. Benny Coulter knocking it over. And the tension is palpable. Don't need more of that. Coulter is one on one at the moment with Michael Shields. That ball needs to go in quickly to him. Stop the play outfield from a down point of view. Stop the short passing and all of that and get it in because Coulter is lethal in the air and a wonderful finisher. Players being attended to out the field. Derek Cavan is one of them. And the referee having consulted with his uh, umpires. The uh, doctor there, just attending to Derek Cavanaugh. And this, once again, is what happened here. A hefty shoulder, down he went. And the player who's coming in to replace him is Finton Gould, fifth sub for Cork. Well, it was a fair ball to go for. Just a straightforward collision. Both players trying to challenge for the ball. And it's Down who take the possession from the kick out. And once again, it's McGinn. Gordon back towards Peter Fitzpatrick. Well blocked by Aidan Walsh, playing his heart out in the middle of the field. Brannigan now. Connor McGinn once more. Down trying everything they know as we head into the two minutes of additional time. And a half a minute of that's already gone. But a down goal can win this All Ireland for them. She knows that much. You can be certain that Marty Clark does as well. He's checked with the linesman over there just to see how much is left, how much time. Just over a minute and 15. Kicked in. Fisted over the bar. It's a one point game. You wouldn't bet against a draw. Danny Hughes, his third point, first of the second half, and it's 16 points to 15. From that line ball by Marty Clark, he got up highest, strongest, with determination, and fisted it over. And James McCartan's team's hopes live on. That's a great score from Hughes. Typifies his display all day, full of heart, full of conviction. Beautiful score. Anybody's game still. What a day's football we've had at Croke Park. And here on the Sunday game live, the minor was great, and this senior game is another great game. Finton Gould taking it down here, losing it, but the referee blows his whistle and gives the free for that foul against him. So it's going to be a free for Conor Cunahan's team. We've got about 20 seconds of the additional time still to play. Cork by just a point, 16-15, and they have the possession. Goulding, holding, kicking, little block on it. Keeper comes, and McVeigh comes out. His challenge is fouled. It's got to be a free to down. They want to get the ball out. We've played the two minutes of additional time. Cork haven't won an All-Ireland for 20 years. Down, trying to deny them. Down, looking for possession. Is there another attack for them? Conor McGinn running into challenges. Conor McGinn trying to slip away from those challenges. And one back by Daniel Goulding. Goulding has scored nine points in this All-Ireland final. He's fouled by Kevin McKernan. And that could be enough to seal victory for the men from the south. Cher O'Sullivan, one of the selectors, is out there to give a little bit of advice to the 24-year-old from Era Oak. Cork's leading scorer in this year's championship with uh, one goal and 43 points in all. Both teams playing in their eighth matches. Only seconds to go. Has Conor Cunahan achieved as a manager what he achieved as a player? Cork beaten in two of the last three All-Ireland finals are tantalisingly close to crossing the line and taking the victory. Daniel Goulding to kick this. It's moving, travelling, going left. They wait for a whistle. There it is, and it's all over. And Cork are the All-Ireland football champions for 2010. Celebrations all around. They were behind by three points at half-time, but they showed character and resolve. They dipped deep 
into their reserves. They brought on the strong men like their captain, Graham Canty, Nicholas Murphy, Derek Kavanagh and others. And Cork, well, it's a victory at last for the men from the south. Conor Cunahan can take the applause after the agony and the despair of losing two finals to Kerry. They eventually deliver a winning performance as Down's unbeaten record in finals is gone. Cork's character, their quality and their sheer determination ultimately proving decisive. But it helped me today to belong to the Rebels. I heartily congratulate Cork on the wonderful performance. They would say it's due, but you have to earn what's due, and they earned it today. Now it gives me great pleasure to bring Sam to be carried home by the lead to our family captain, Graham Canty. Christy Cooney hands over the Sam McGuire Cup to Graham Canty, Cork All-Ireland champions for the seventh time ever. What an ovation, what an afternoon for them. So the Sal Maguire Cup is heading back down to Cork. Well, they've had heartbreak years. We know about 07, about 09, where they lost those two finals. But they've come good today. This has been a project which has been in the making for a number of years for all of these players. They've come good. They are the 2010 All-Ireland football champions.